Welcome, friends. Today we gonna play. It's a 2D platformer where you get to play the stages in any order like the way it is in Mega Man. And also just like Mega Man, it was even made by Capcom. And it shows. Back in the day, if you ever saw a logo like this on a game, you would know right away that it was gonna smack. And you get hit right up front with that legendary theme song at the title screen. Absolutely love this jam. I could listen to this all day. So this game is a lot like Mega Man, except you get to play as the original gangbanger. Scrooge McDuck. This man was living like a modern famous influencer without showing it off. He even be swimming in gold coins just for his own amusement. That's some real Mr. Beast type shit. He got a private plane? Dude lives in a castle. An actual castle. So you want to know how our boy got all stacked up? He's an oil tycoon, an industrial pioneer, and a Blood Diamonds gangster. Man goes everywhere and does everything. Like the Amazon rainforest. And even the moon. He is the life of parties he has never attended. If he were to punch you in the face, you would have to fight off the strong urge to thank him. Sharks have a week dedicated to him. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't always play NES, but when I do, I prefer DuckTales. Alright, so this game is legit. The music is bumping and thumping all the way through, and it's got a really nice flow. Especially the moon stage. This song is so nostalgic. And I really like these astronaut looking guys. Although enemies respawn constantly. But this spot is kind of funny. What is bro doing? Really? Again? This is a true test of patience. But then sometimes he just gets stuck like this. That's really funny. Well, this is our opportunity to pass. I'm not sure what the different difficulty settings actually do for sure, but it feels like enemies respawn a lot more frequently, and it also feels like they walk a lot faster. But I don't actually know. If you know, please tell me what the differences in the difficulty settings are. It's like a fresh glass for sure when you finally get to play a platformer where the placement of everything is intentional. There are so many games from this time where shit is just everywhere and all over the place with no rhyme or reason to it. You just slog through everything, and there's a lot of instances where you just have to take hits to force your way through it all. I really appreciate it when you find a game like DuckTales where the placement of everything is intentional. And if you get good enough, you can even play through the entire game without taking a single damage. That just shows you how good it is. That just shows you how well designed everything is. All the level designs are really cool. Every stage has multiple paths, and there's lots of secrets to explore. You also get properly rewarded and feel accomplished for taking the harder paths. Like this bit here, where you can show off and pogo over all of these frog boys to get to a secret treasure. And I love finding health upgrades in games. It gives a good sense of progression as you see that health bar fill up. It's a lot of fun to explore around and see what all you can interact with. Like hitting these coffins spawn secret gems. Or these knight armors sometimes reveal treasure boxes. But sometimes it's a trap. Get wrecked. I really enjoy all the little details like this. You can even jump in front of the HUD if you can get high enough up on the stage. It's the little things like this that make us happy. I really appreciate how these rocks are carefully placed where you can drive them into enemies. It's one of those games where you can go through the stages really quick, or if you're careful and patient, you can find opportunities like this to set up and make it easier. In this snow stage, I think it's really cute that if you pogo into the ground you get stuck. 
but you can also just immediately jump out of it, so it's not super punishing. All of the little touches like this really shows off the polish. I also really appreciate this checkpoint guy that'll take you home. It's nice for when you've just been exploring around and you just want to go to a different stage. So every inch of this game feels intentional, but controlling the Scrooge is very finicky. So you got two buttons. We got the jump button and the stick button. So you can't just jump on enemies like you do in Mario. You gotta give them the cane. And to do that, you can either walk up to an object and hit the button to drive it like a golf ball. Or, while in the air, you hold down and hit the stick button at the same time. And then he holds it out like a pogo stick, and it's really cool. And there's lots of opportunities to express your skill with it. And you can even release it early to do short jumps. But because you have to hold down and hit the button at the same time, sometimes because of the way that the NES controller handles diagonals, you'll feel like you hit the right buttons, but like it doesn't come out. Or sometimes you bounce in directions that you weren't intending to go, because you're like trying to hold down the whole time and also manage bouncing from side to side. It can be really annoying and get you in bad situations when you move in unintentional ways. If you could just hold the stick button by itself in the air to do the pogo without having to press down, it would be a lot better. Also, jumping off of ropes feels really unresponsive. It's like if you're hitting even a slight diagonal and not exactly a perfect left or right plus jump together at the same time, then he won't get off the rope. Coupling that with high intensity situations where you gotta do it real fast, it's very frustrating. It just feels bad when you get hit because the controls don't feel responsive. But aside from the hyper-precise controls, there's nothing else to complain about. It's just a fun game that keeps up the pace all the way through. And it's a lot of fun to open up all of the boxes and get that money. They just points, but it's very satisfying. I used to have so much fun scoring up in those old Mario games just for the sake of it. Like no one else is ever going to see your score, and this game doesn't even save. It's just fun to see number go up. Get those figures. Collect that money. We stay in paid all game. Alright, so also just like Jump and Shoot Man, we got a proper boss battle at the end of every stage. We got Hard Man, Ice Man, Rouge the Bat, Armored Armadillo, Moon Cheese, and Duck Dracula. It's a really good use of the pogo mechanic to have to bounce off of the bats to hit him, but sometimes you just turn completely around in the opposite direction that you're trying to go because you have to hold down and hit the button at the same time to do it. Like this part in the moon stage was just such a struggle because I kept turning around when I didn't mean to. But after you whoop Dracula, you gotta race this dude up a rope. Ooh, but I can't get off of it. Really? I gotta fight him again? Alright, round two. Here we go. That's what I thought. Can't hold me. Can't hold the Scrooge. Mr. Worldwide. He wouldn't be afraid to show his feminine side, if he had one. His mother has a tattoo that reads, Son. At museums, he's allowed to touch the art. He is the most interesting man in the world. Not only is we a multi-bajillionaire industrial capitalist, but we also Indiana Jones. Look at these kids trying to take all the credit. All y'all did was get rescued. Scrooge McDuck out here saving the world, slaying Dracula, paying off the national debt. This game is an absolute blast all the way through. And I just love these types of games that you can play through in a single afternoon. This game is so sick. And they even made a modern remastered version of the game. It looks really good. Game is beautiful. I love the hand-drawn sprites. And it's not an exact one-for-one -one either, so it's like a whole new experience. Enemies in this game be looking a little rapey though. But the remaster doesn't force you to hold down to Pogo. It feels so good. It's so smooth. 
and you can actually get off of the ropes. If you liked the original game, then you've got to try the remaster. And there's even more collectibles to find. It does a great job of recapturing the essence of the original as a modern game, but also being a wholly new experience on its own. But why does everyone in this game like to jiggle so much? Come on, everybody likes to jiggle, right? No. And all the old bosses come back, but they're bigger and better than before. It's the same characters come back, but they might as well be whole new battles because of how different they are. And then there's this new guy that sort of functions as a mini-boss. He's brand new. But the boss fights in the remaster are epic. I love the flavor and the personality of the boss battles. And the extra transitory parts of the stages helps to break up the action with varying types of gameplay. Like this airplane scene. And this minecart bit. I also just love minecart levels. Really takes me back. I love how big the Yeti guy is in the remaster. They took every opportunity to up the ante from the original. Dracula be looking a little intense in this game. Every hundred years he comes back, except this time he wants to suck more than just your blood. The most interesting man in the world is also a Belmont. This fight goes hard. And you also gotta race old boy again after you whoop Dracula. Except this time, you can actually get off the ropes. And then you gotta keep going, because the whole place is about to blow like Brinstar. I always liked sections like this. It's thrilling to the very end. And the remaster definitely lives up to the hype and the legacy of the original. But did you know that they also made a DuckTales 2? Aw, oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Well, spit on my spats. Oh, Uncle Scrooge, I didn't know you was so dirty. And of course I have to play every game on the highest difficulty. I feel like that if I don't, that I'm missing out on the full experience. Why do I always do this to myself? Okay, so just like before, we get to play the stages in any order. And right off the bat, we can pogo without having to push down. It's so nice. And ropes are no longer such a precise issue. You can just simply hit the jump button with no direction to get off of a rope. And at the end of every stage, you can spend your money in this little shop. That's really cool. So now the points have a purpose. And you even buy the health upgrades in this game. So it's a part of the progression. I like that because it makes collecting all of the little gems actually meaningful. You can also purchase consumable health refills to carry with you. It's really nice. It's kind of like having an E-Tank in Mega Man. You can also buy extra lives and continues. But like, don't die. I ain't wasting my money on that. Also, there's a different one-time collectible that you can buy at the end of each stage. Sometimes it's a health refill, but sometimes it's a piece of that treasure map. And in this one, you actually find power-ups hidden in the stages like gaining the ability to break stronger rocks. Multiple paths that require different upgrades gives the stages a bit of replay value. It's fun to explore all the different routes, even if it isn't necessary. And there's lots more creative uses for your cane, like the ability to hook onto stuff. You can grab these rings on the wall, or pull objects and levers, and even fire a cannon. It's a lot of fun to see all the different things that you can interact with. I really like this part, where you pull the mirror to reflect the light. It just looks really cool. We also got another round of great bosses like Gutsman, Torchman, Pharaoh Man, Captain Hook, Magic Koopa, and Booger Man. And if you collect the whole treasure map, then you get a secret bonus stage, and the good ending. These games are so good that it makes you want to explore every little space and collect every little thing because you just want there to be more game. It's legit.